Hello everybody and nice to see so many of you here live with us today and welcome if you're joining later on the recording. Um, first I'm going to do a general update from Dynamics Consultants and then uh, we will get into the agenda that you saw flash up a few minutes ago. So there's some good news and there's some bad news from Dynamics Consultants and I'm going to start with the sad news that we are saying goodbye to Tony Clark who is retiring at the end of the year. Tony's been responsible for the operations team for many years at DC, and several of us have worked with him in previous companies. So this is sad for a lot of us, but great for Tony, and now he and Lorraine can enjoy a more leisurely pace of life. So obviously we've had to replace Tony, and to fill those shoes is Jeremy Pike. Jeremy joined us in September, so there's plenty of time to hand over from Tony. So welcome to Jeremy, uh, Jeremy, and great to have you on board. And you'll be hearing a lot from Jeremy today as he's doing many of the topics. <clears throat> we've also welcomed some new people to the team. So Danielle Ross, known as Danny, and James Rogers in the consultancy team. Both are experienced Business Central consultants. Some of you will have met Sultan Amin, who has taken over the new business sales at DC from me. So great news for us all at DC as we're continuing to grow and strengthen the team. Whilst we're updating you, the old gold and silver partnerships uh, competencies have now been replaced by Microsoft Solution Partner designation with additional specialisations. Nice snappy title. I'm delighted to tell you that we have achieved both of those accreditations. So we are now Microsoft Solution Partner with business application specialisations. So as well as Cyber Essentials and the majority of the consultants and developers having achieved their MB800 and MB820s for Business Central, we as a partner have the highest level of accredi accreditation, so you are in very safe and experienced set of hands. As part of this, Microsoft are encouraging every company to move across to SaaS and are monitoring us as partners on this basis. Um, as we generate upgrade quotes, we are also including the possible migration to SAS as part of this. And because of this monitoring, you will get an invitation from Microsoft, uh, followed by a short questionnaire regarding the proposal. Please, can I ask that you complete these and answer the questions? Very happy to help if required, and we will obviously let you know when they are on their way. All of this forms part of our accreditation, and we would appreciate you completing these for us. There is no pressure from us to go to SAS, but we have to be seen to be making you aware of all of this. I'm sure you're all experiencing the same business challenges as we are with the ongoing conflict in Ukraine, the UK budgets, the US elections. The UK budget didn't help businesses, increasing employers' national insurance, business rates, capital gains tax and many more things. But now we know what the state of play is, it does remove a lot of the FUD factor, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and allows for the budgeting, planning, and implementation for the new systems and projects to go ahead to help us maintain the edge in our businesses. And just to add for you people doing the budgeting for next year, Microsoft have announced last Monday, or this, sorry, Monday this week, uh, a 5% price increase on the annual 12 month SaaS contracts where you pay them monthly from the 1st of April. So effectively, they're levering, leveraging a credit charge on those people opting for the month for the 12 month contract, but paying monthly. Uh, the majority of our customers in DC have paid adva in advance on the 12 and 36 month contracts. So it shouldn't affect you uh, because Microsoft very generously leave the liability with us as a partner. Uh, so you have the best price option in this case. As always, there are a few anomalies that we are seeking clarification on around. There are promotions to transition to SAS uh, and there's no clarification on what's happening with those licenses. If you want any further information or you need further clarification on your license contract, then please feel free to call me. We will be in contact with you during the course of the year and especially in advance to discuss the renewals. At DC, we're also just about to join you on the SaaS platform with our internal system. Uh, we have done the upgrade, we are testing the migration, and we will be going live very soon. Uh, we remained on premise due to the nature of our business, the ability to work with many customer databases. Obviously, the impact on Azure costs uh, is huge. We sent four people to Directions EMEA in Vienna, and Tom Jenkins has an update on this after my uh, session here. 
Directions is a partner conference and it's great to hear what's coming up from Microsoft and also the partner community, especially around the ISVs with their different business apps to see what's new in the market. Well, I think that's all other than to welcome you all to watching. Um, please remember to add any questions into the comments on the chat and we will pick them up at the end of each session or after the event uh, if it's if it's too complex. You will be getting a feedback form that we will send to you along with the recording in a few days. So now over to Tom for the update on directions. Thank you, Catherine. Earlier this month, 3,200 people from 650 partners descended on Vienna for the annual Directions EMEA event, the premier event for Microsoft Dynamics partners in the EMEA region. This year amongst the attendees were four from Dynamics Consultants. Directions is very much focused around what's new and also what is coming in the next year or so. As we had predicted, there was a lot of talk around AI and Copilot, with the closing keynote pretty much dedicated to it. Of the 108 co-pilots currently released, eight of them are in Business Central. In addition to this, we had a preview of the sales order agent, which is currently in public preview in the US and will be available over here in the new year, with the bookkeeper agent following shortly behind. Microsoft's plan is to release many such agents over the coming months to help automate many of the mundane day-to-day -day tasks within Business Central. We also saw the introduction of some long awaited and well overdue Power BI dashboards with seven Power BI apps containing some 70 plus reports across all areas of the system. Currently, these are only available on SaaS, but they will be made open source so that anyone can copy them and then update them. Um, that should be around the spring of next year, which will then enable us to modify them for on prem use. Reporting is further extended with improvements in word layouts and additional reports being made available with Excel layouts. Whilst there are a number of new BC features available on-prem, such as subscription billing, sustainability, projects and service management improvements, features like the Power BI apps, co-pilot agents, Shopify integration and Teams integration, functionality that interacts seamlessly with other products are only available on SaaS. That's good news for those in the cloud, but not so good for on-prem. As a result, Dynamics Consultants now says that now is the time to migrate to the cloud and Business Central SaaS. Those considering the move can make use of the bridge to cloud licensing offer or the related specialized offer with initial 40% discount on licenses. But please note, these only apply if you have not had an existing Business Central SaaS subscription. So please resist the urge to purchase a single user test environment without first talking to us at DC. In addition to the Microsoft licensing office, we can currently provide a migration assessment fully funded by Microsoft. We will be working through the long list of these over the coming months. But if you are interested in migrating and want to be added to the priority list, then please let us know ASAP. Another thing top of mind at Direction is security. We know of a number of businesses that have suffered a ransomware attack in the past. Some have paid the ransom, others have rebuilt their systems. All have had significant levels of disruption. Microsoft are the forerunners in terms of security as they have built the systems that most businesses run on and their technicians know how to, ru um, how to run them and set them up better than we can hope to. They are starting to enforce MFA, which is multi-factor authentication, across all tenants. And if you do nothing else from an IT security point of view, then do implement MFA. We have recently contacted a number of our customers suggesting security improvements. If you need help around this, then please let us know and we can point you in the right direction. It is for the reasons mentioned so far that DC will be migrating their own business central environment to BC SaaS at the end of this month. So that is now, but what of the future? Well, Microsoft have released their roadmap for the 2025 release wave one, uh, which is due out in April. This release includes improved performance, preview of attachments in the web client, the ability for users to create queries, Power BI cross company reports for those running multiple companies, enhanced reporting for manufacturing, improved e-invoicing matching co-pilot, the bookkeeper agent, manufacturing enhancements, quality management and subscription 
billing and sustainability improvements. From a licensing point of view, I was hoping to see the back of capacity charges and additional environment charges, but unfortunately they remain in place for now. But BC SAS remained free from price increases seen for the on-prem licenses um, and other Dynamics products in October this year, except that is for the addition of a 5% increase, which applies to pretty much all Microsoft one-year and three-year licenses that are paid monthly. Annual payment prices remain unchanged. However, with this change, also sees the availability of M365 Copilot on a one-year paid monthly term, again with a 5% increase. If you've not yet used the M365 Copilot, then you should give it a try. The summarising of team meetings in particular is very good. Additionally, Microsoft have announced the demise of on-premise perpetual licences for new customers from next year. And Dynamics GP has been announced as end of life from 2029, with the recommended upgrade path being to Business Central. Business Central SaaS has surpassed the 40,000 customer mark already. And with the migrations from GP and NavBC on-prem and Microsoft's heavy investment in Business Central and AI, this number is only going to increase and even more rapidly. The buzz at directions this year was that Business Central is indeed a very good place to be. From a business point of view, speaking to others at Directions and our own customers, we have seen generally that 2024 has been a slow year. So if you've had a good year this year, then well done, you have bucked the trend. This, I believe, is down to the level of uncertainty that 2024 has presented, with high inflation going into the year and high interest rates making people cautious about investments. We close the year with a healthier inflation, decreasing interest rates, a general election budget and the US election behind us, bringing with it a high level of uncertainty in most areas anyway. We should hopefully see a return to normal for most buying behaviours across most industries, and I'm hopeful for a positive 2025 for all of us. Finally, I'm more than happy to have a one-to-one -one conversation with any of you that wants one. Just reach out and we'll arrange a call. I will now pass you across to the team to show you a bit more detail around what's new. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Tom. That's really nice to hear what was happening in Vienna. Um, so now I'd like to introduce you, introduce you to Jeremy Pike for the first session. Hi, Thank Jeremy. You, Hi, That's OK. Thank you. As you've heard from Tom about the hot topic was in direction, so now no prizes for guessing that it's co-pilot and AI. So we're going to have a bit of fun in this in the rest of the session. We're going to play co-pilot bingo. Can you spot how many times from now we mention co-pilot? Um, just a reminder that I'm sure this may generate some questions, so please remember to add them into the chat box and we'll pick them up as we go uh, and deal with them hopefully through the session, but if not afterwards. So over to you, Jeremy. Thank you, Catherine. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, for those watching on Catch Up, good evening, good morning, whatever time you're watching this. Um, it's a real pleasure to be here. Uh, as Catherine mentioned, I'm here as the operations manager taking over from Tony. I'd like to wish Tony all the best in his retirement. I'm sure he's got lots planned. Um, I've spent 10 years in the Dynamics ecosystem, and it's a real pleasure to be here with Business Central, but at Dynamics Consultants. And um, I'm looking forward to meeting you all at some point in the real near future. Well, as Catherine mentioned, and I'm going to be the first one to say it, co-pilot, it wouldn't be a Microsoft 2024 presentation without the word co-pilot and AI uh, in the presentation. So we have co-pilot in Business Central. Tom mentioned there that we've had co-pilot in Microsoft 365. Uh, for a number of months now. We use it internally with our meeting notes. It's certainly helped me in my day-to-day -day life, taking actions away from meetings. I'm not having to write my notes down on paper anymore. So definitely give that one a try. But today we're going to be looking at Copilot within Business Central. And firstly, I want to say no one needs to be scared. It's not here to replace us. It's not here robots taking over the world. It's not taking our jobs away. We need to look at Copilot in a positive light and with a positive lens. It's here to support us. It's here to help us with our admin, with our repetitive tasks. So really, I've broken it down into three areas. 
how can we use Copilot to help us improve our productivity? Help us to simplify any order taking by use one of the uh, sales agents that are coming. Get that data driven insights quicker. And we're going to see today how we can use the AI insights to get those data uh, driven information. And then all about reclaiming that time to work. So we're not having to spend time doing our analysis. We're getting the system to present us that data that we need in an instant. Helping us to unlock our creativity. If you're anything like me, I'm not the most creative person. It takes me a long time to generate product descriptions or come up with collateral. I'm using AI now to help me as a basis for my um, my product descriptions, my collateral, and I'm helping, um, I'm using it to help me, sorry. And then I will build on that using my own language and my own um, terms. And then finally, eliminating repetitive tasks, streamlining those monthly processes, using it as we're going to see in an example today, using it to help with our bank account reconciliation. Humans are so valuable in doing certain tasks and we waste a lot of time doing the mundane repetitive tasks every month. So why don't we get Copilot to do that and allow us to focus on those tasks where we really can add some value. So if we dive a little bit deeper into what Copilot can do for us within Business Central. Well, firstly, it can help guide us. It can help explain concepts within Business Central, help us learn new skills. How do we create a customer? If I'm new to BC, I may not know how to create a customer. And now typically that would be going off to the Internet, finding a, a guide and stepping through it. But I can do that now right within the BC system using Copilot. I can use the chat function, ask it, how do I create a customer? And it will then return me the steps on how to create that customer record. How do I find a particular invoice, a page, a setup item? I can do that all within Copilot chat. It's using the natural language. So I can type as I would speak, Copilot recognizes what I'm looking for and then directs me to the right place. As I mentioned, reconciling bank statements, comparing e-documents that are coming in. Those tasks that are repetitive, manual, and take us time every month, I'm going to transfer that over to Copilot. It can do it more efficiently and it can release me to do those tasks where I can add the real value. Analyzing data, we're going to see today how I can analyze data right within the system. I'm not having to take it out to Excel to Power BI. I can do it right from within BC. And as I mentioned there, unlocking that creativity by suggesting draft product descriptions, suggesting number patterns, and basically helping me to, to do my day to day job. OK, so chat with um, Copilot. I mentioned there that I wanted to ask it, how do I create a customer record? I can also ask the system, show me all of the invoices for a particular customer. And you're seeing there the chat is going in and saying, show me the invoices for Alpine. Copilot's going away, it's going to have a look and it's going to return all of those invoices for Alpine. And I can also write that in my own language, currently available in English and a variety of languages around the world. So if English isn't your first language, you can use your first language and it will be able to translate that for you. And it all looks at that data within BC. Secondly, the bank account reconciliation. So you can see from the video on the screen that I'm uploading a bank statement. I'm generating that reconciliation and the systems match two of the eight lines. But Copilot has managed to go one step further and match four of the eight lines. Now, you might not think that's a lot, but that's an additional two lines and two lines less that I have to check as a human. Now, instead of checking six lines, I'm only checking four. Now, just imagine if we multiply this out over 100, 200, 300 lines, the real power of what Copilot can do for us and how it can make our life just that little bit easier. And then finally, the AI powered analysis using Copilot. I can come in, look at a particular page. So I'm looking at customer ledger entries. I'm saying I want to add the due date instead of the amount, and I want to pivot that by year and by quarter. And you can see in the video, the system is doing that for me right from within BC. Historically, I would be taking this out to Excel, Power BI, having the data in a table, creating a pivot table and then analyzing that data and then stepping back into BC to make any changes or to look at that information. I don't have to do that now. I've got that all within my system. So let's step in and take a look at this in real time. 
So I can see that I've got my Business Central system here and I have a new tab top right hand corner for Copilot. I've actually lost count of how many times I've even said that today. But I'm going to ask it. Show me invoices for our fine ski house. And I'm going to say send. That's going to then go off. It's going to work on it. It's going to gather me all of the invoices for Alpine Ski House. Now, just while that's getting that information and those records, you can see at the top that I've got prompts. So if I'm not sure what to ask the system, I've got the prompts there to help me and to step me through um, what, I'd, what I'd like to do, or what I'd like to see. So there we have it. The system has produced me all of the invoices for Alpine Ski House. I've got the ability to dive into a particular invoice or I can have a look at them under the posted invoice page. So let's take this top one. I can dive straight into the invoice and it's then presented to me on the screen. Moving away from me having to navigate to the invoices page, navigate to the customer page. I know what I'm looking for. It's in my mind. I type it out and it's presented to me within a matter of seconds. Saving me a couple of minutes might not seem a lot, but you add those minutes up over a year. That's quite a bit of time. So that's just an example of how we can use the chat. Another example, how do I create a customer record? So I'm asking how I create a customer record. I've shown you there how I can see the invoices that's taken me to a particular page. How do I create a customer record? It's told me that I can't find the steps, but here's some guides. So even if it can't find it within its own language, it can then send you to the relevant pages on Microsoft Learn. So it's, I think in the past chatbots say, I can't find that, add something else. Copilot's intelligent enough to say, oh, I can't find that, but here's something that will help you. And it sends you out to the um, Microsoft Learn pages. So the next step was the AI analysis that you saw in the video. I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna say, I want to have a look at the customer ledger entries. So I'm gonna type in customer ledger entries here. And I'm doing this because I have a lot of information on this page. Now this, this is a lot of information, not really relevant to me. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to analyze the list. And I'm going to say, add due date instead of payment and show as pivot by year and quarter. I've just naturally spoken, I've typed it out and I'm going to generate that. So the system is now going to go away and say, okay, Jeremy wants to see the due date. He wants it as a pivot. He wants it by year and by quarter. Now, this is typically something that I would do, as I said, in Excel and do, do it in, in Excel outside of the system. But I can actually do it now right within Business Central. And I can see I've got all of my information that I can break down and look at all of my different invoices for a particular year, for a particular quarter. So as you can see there, in a matter of seconds, I was able to get that analysis done, take the data away that I need, and then I can make those decisions uh, to help me on my day to day. So there's just a quick snippet of some of the elements of Copilot within Business Central. So just to recap then, we've improved our productivity. We're using the sales agents to help us with order taking. We're using the AI feature to get us that data and drive those insights faster and reclaim that time for the important work. We can unlock creativity. And by using things like the bank account reconciliation, we can eliminate the repetitive tasks. But one thing to leave you on here, just remember, Copilot's not here to replace our jobs. It's here to be our assistant, here to support us and here to enable us to do more with our day. Catherine, thank you very much. I'm not sure how many times I said the word there, but um, hopefully you were able to capture we've been, we've been keeping count. There was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not stopping now because I'm sure it's going to come up as we go through. So um, that's really interesting, Jeremy, and it doesn't appear to be as scary as the media would have you believe. Um, just a couple of questions coming up for me is what part of Copilot comes with the BC license or is there additional license costs? That's a fantastic question. So with Copilot within Business Central, it, it is included with your license. I will double check whether it's essentials or premium, but it's included with your Business Central license as long as as a caveat here, as with every Microsoft license, as long as you use it within the context of Business Central. So everything I've done today, the chat functionality, the AI analysis, the bank account reconciliation, all of that is included with your license. When you're integrating with external systems, there will be additional licensing required.
and I think Tom touched on that in the uh, in the presentation. So that's really good news, though, that there's no additional cost to start using the elements that are there now in Business Central. I suppose the negative is that this is just for SaaS and the people on premise don't have this uh, functionality currently. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, it is just for SaaS. So benefit if you're on SaaS, but if you're on premise today, it's a, it's a slight sad face and that it's uh, not coming yet. But I'm sure Microsoft will look at that in the future. Yeah. Um, just on that, we have asked everybody to put the questions in the chat, um, but apparently uh, they, they're unable to do that. Um, we will be monitoring enquiries at d-c.co.uk. Um, so if you have got anything burning that you really like us to address, then please email us at enquiries at d-c.co.uk. So now, Jeremy, we're going to go on to the other topic, creating all the buzz, the Power BI reports now embedded in Business Central. So over to you again. Thank you, Catherine. Yes. So as Tom mentioned, there was a few areas that really created that big buzz in uh, Directions and Vienna. Uh, the first one being, I'm not saying it. Uh, the second one is reporting and analytics. So for those of you who weren't aware, Microsoft made a strategic acquisition of the IP from Fenwick in Australia for their embedded Power BI reporting pack. For those of you aware, uh, Fenwick create uh, reporting packs for Power BI and make them available to their customers. Microsoft have made this acquisition and they're now having that as part of Business Central and as part of uh, your software. What does this add to this new wave? Well, it adds a whole host of new reports for finance, sales, purchasing, inventory, manufacturing, and projects. And projects was called jobs in the old world, being renamed to projects in the latest release. So this is fantastic for us as we've now got a whole uh, load of new Power BI reports that are straight available out of the box. We're also able to bring in our BI metric scorecards that we're using to track those KPIs. And that's all done directly within Business Central. I'm just going to break them down by module area so you can see how many reports there are by, uh, by, by each module. So for finance, we've got 14 new reports. There's 12 reports in sales. Purchasing, we have 13. Inventory, we have seven reports. 11 reports for manufacturing. And there are six reports for the projects area. So you can see quite a lot of new reports coming. Uh, real big enhancement for us using Business Central. And just a small example of the reports that are available within the system. So let's get on to the exciting part and actually look at these reports in real time. So I'm going to go back to BC. Let me go back to my uh, homepage here. And we're going to take a look at my report. Just flick back. Perfect. Just getting ready. So as mentioned, we had the report. So if I click on all reports at the top, I can now see within each module area, I've got a pane for Power BI reports. So if I just minimize that, I can see that I've got some for finance, purchasing, sales and marketing, manufacturing, warehousing. So I've got reports for each of the module areas. And each module we have a report, which is the overview containing all of the reports, but it will also break it down by granular area. So I can see that I've got balance sheet by month end. I've got EBITDA, Power BI, uh, Power BI EBITDA as well. So if I click on the finance report, I can see my Power BI report coming to life. So as you can see, a whole variety of information. Now for me, I'm only interested in Alpine Ski House. We'll keep with the same theme as we have today. And as of any Power BI report, select on Alpine Ski House and it's then focused all of the information on that particular customer. So I can see their revenue, the assets and everything else. And as we can see across the bottom, I've got different financial reports, income statements, EBITDA, liabilities, profitability. If I wanted to take the data a step further, I can use the filters on the right hand side. So again, exactly the same as we would in Power BI, I can filter on the fiscal years, GL categories, different dimensions, and I can apply those filters and those filters will apply to my report. I'm able to take my reports out, uh, copy them if I want to have them for a management reporting pack, pop them into PowerPoint. I'm also able uh, to 
embed my own reports as well. As with all Power BI, I can focus a particular report. So we want to look at this top five customers by balance. I'm going to pop that into focus mode and I can see there that uh, top five customers in a large view and I can go back to my home page. Let's take a look at another report then. So very similar. Let's look at the sales report. Again, all embedded, not having to do anything else. And let's look at sales by salesperson. We're going to call out Lena. How's Lena getting on? Well, I can see all of Lena's sales and I can drill down and take a look at all of the sales. So exactly the same as we get in Power BI. And I can look at the granular level of information taken from within Business Central. And that's just an example of the reports we have. Like I said, there's a lot of reports available and they're all going to be coming in the next release. So a quick recap, I have 14 reports for finance, 12 reports for sales, 13 for purchasing, and seven for inventory, manufacturing, there are 11 reports and projects, there are six reports available for projects. So Catherine, that was a really quick overview of the Power BI features, but hopefully that gave everybody a flavour of what's coming. And back to yeah, you Yeah, exactly. That's, exa that's exactly what this is designed to do, just to keep everybody alert and, and know what's what's looming. Um, are they available today, Jeremy, or, or is it a coming soon? It's going to be a coming soon. Uh, I believe they're going to be coming in the first release of 2025, so spring of 25, uh, in preview at the moment. Okay. OK, well, as soon as we hear anything, then obviously we'll mail everybody and let them know. Um, do we need a license to run those Power BI reports? I knew licensing would come up as it always does. <laughs> so the reports that we have available that I've just shown today are all out of the box with no licensing included with your Business Central license. If you wish to share these reports with non-BC users or any other person outside of the company, uh, they will need a Power BI license. However. Okay. Again, very much like Copilot, as long as you're using it from within the context of Business Central, then you are licensed with your appropriate BC license. There was another Copilot word again. That's two <laughs> for your scorecards. Um, how easy are these reports to activate? Do we have to do anything or are they just going to appear? I'd love to say they're just going to appear. Mm. Um, no, in all, in all seriousness, they're very easy to set up. You simply go into Power BI. Uh, on the web, you get the apps, so they're all released as apps, so the finance has its app, warehousing has an app. You then download those apps, install them in Power BI. You then flick back to Business Central on the same tenant and you follow the, I believe it's a six step wizard, where you then select the apps that you wish, point them to the relevant report areas, click next, click finish, and within about five minutes, the uh, synchronization takes place between Business Central and Power BI and away you go. So to summarize, download the apps on powerbi.com, follow the six, I think six step wizard on Business Central and away you go. It doesn't sound too complex anyway. Um, obviously, if you want to take more or take up more use of Power BI, uh, we have consultants and we can help you with licensing, set up consultancy services, whatever you require. So obviously give us a shout for that. So now we've covered all the exciting stuff. Um, Jeremy's going to move on to the more mundane. He's going to cover some new legislative elements. Um, and just apologies again for chat not working. It's a Microsoft issue, apparently. Um, email inquiries uh, at d-c. And we've put that in the chat so that you can uh, you can use it straight away. And we will be monitoring that now and obviously over the next few days. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks, Catherine. Well, I'm glad you said that word because I always struggle with it. So I'm going to say legislation because I can say that one. Uh, I don't know. I don't. Always get stuck with me. So the updates coming regarding legislation. I've broken these down into two areas. One concerning sort of general updates and then one for cloud for sustainability. Looking at the general updates, we now have the ability to use e-documents with Power Automate. So if I wanted to move e-documents around outside of Business Central, maybe going for some approval, I can do that now using Power Automate. We have the ability to host and hold multiple VAT numbers on a particular customer record. And we can add attachments when we send electronic documents. So in the past, we can send electronic documents, but we may want to attach 
maybe a backing for a timesheet or uh, a drawing or a product script or product information sheet. We'd have to attach that separately, but now we can do that right from within the system and add those uh, attachments when we're sending out electronic documents. And next we have cloud for sustainability. Again, like with Copilot, Microsoft are making a real drive for cloud for sustainability uh, in the sustainable world now. Everyone is looking to reduce their carbon emissions, reduce their uh, global footprint, and we can now do that and have that recorded within Microsoft Cloud for Sustainability. And we have that coming within Business Central. Some of you may be aware that there is a separate platform for Microsoft Cloud for Sustainability that has been released, I believe, for about two years now. But we actually have that ability to record all of the information within Business Central, allowing us to achieve our sustainability goals. A lot of organizations now are reporting that they want to be net zero by 2030, 2040, whatever it might be. Large organizations are having to report to the government on their carbon emissions. Not so much of a concern for smaller organizations, but we may be required to file up to the larger organizations if we're part of their supply chain. There's a new sustainability manager role center. So you're able to see all of your sustainability metrics and your goals from within a contained role center. Recording our emissions. Having our sustainability in entries within financial reports, having subcategories for a sustainability account. We can track the purchasing of carbon credits within Business Central. So if we're looking to offset our emissions and using carbon credits, we can track those purchases right from within the system. Have a sustainability certificates for our items and vendors, having those recorded within the system so we have one place and one source of truth. And the ability to have carbon fee calculations as well. So, as I mentioned then, so how does this work for us? Well, it allows us to track and oversee our emissions across all of the scopes one, two and three. We can visualise our footprint using Power BI and looking at those that list of accounts. We can categorize and organize our emissions by allocating them to different categories. So we might have purchasing categories. We might have expense categories. We want to analyze, um, let's say, my travel. If I jump on a train, we might want to analyze that, analyze our driving, analyze our office usage. We can categorize all of our emissions uh, in different ways. Analyzing and visualizing and reporting. There will be Power BI reports coming for sustainability. We don't have them today. We have the traditional KPIs and metrics in Business Central, but we will have uh, more deeper Power BI reports coming in the future. And really importantly, we're leveraging that same user interface that we're using on a day-to-day -day basis. We're not having to jump out to an external system. We're not having to move out to Excel, paper forms. We are having everything within Business Central. So we have the sustainability role center. As you can see here, I can see that I use 10 kilograms of uh, carbon today, which is 14% up from yesterday. Uh, maybe we were doing a particular manufacturing process that required more energy, so we've used more carbon. I can see how much I've used in a particular month. Um, purchases, I've got documents incoming. I've got my goals as well. So I have my role center that's specifically for sustainability. More and more organizations are employing sustainability managers to look after the emissions and, and the sustainability for the future. So this role center will be fantastic for them in completing their uh, role. And we can, as always with Business Central, create our own KPIs and add them to the role center. I mentioned about the, the sustainability chart of accounts and how we record um, how we record that within our financial ledgers. I can record purchasing electricity. You can see there that I've um, purchased some electricity from the Contoso power plant. I purchased from worldwide importers, green tariff energy. So I can actually record where I'm purchasing my energy from, how much CO2 that's going to generate or how much that costed me as well. I can also see about purchasing of goods, plastic, aluminium and steel and what the um, emissions are for actually making that purchase. This all adds up into how much emissions I generate as an organisation, really importantly, and helping us to track that and reduce that over time. I mentioned in the beginning about tracking it with the sustainability journals. I get the train. I know when I jump on the train, I use the train line. It tells me going from my house in, in London down to the office in Southampton, it used a certain amount of CO2. 
I can then record that in the system and then we can report on how much CO2 I generate by traveling to and from the office. We can do the same with car mileage. We can record how much uh, CO2 I generate from driving in the car. Now these are all manual entry, but we can also use the inbuilt system calculations to help us to determine how much CO2, how many emissions we generate by using different forms of travel. Also by using our laptops, our monitors, our office, we can also track all of that within the journals and then that wraps up into my ledgers and I can then see how much I've used on a given period. We can also track the emissions for purchase documents as well. So purchase invoices, purchase orders, credit memos. Um, and again, really importantly, having it all within Business Central, we're avoiding duplicate data entry and consolidating all of our financial and sustainability data in one single place. And also when we buy those carbon credits, we can then record them within the system as well. I mentioned about having the insights. We have the Excel reports today. We have the views for role centers. And there's also APIs enabled for those that wish to go and create their Power BI reports. The APIs are enabled and we can connect those um, APIs to other systems as well. An organization I worked with previously started to look at how they could connect their ERP system to their manufacturing systems to see actually how much uh, emissions they generate and have that as a direct feed into the ERP. So we have the APIs there available if you have your data for sustainability stored elsewhere. And then finally planning, having the plan, the scorecards and the goals, obviously it's really important if we're setting targets, for example, being net zero by 2030, how do we get there? Well, we can do that with the planning of the scorecards and the goals, baselining it from where we are today and looking at the values and the forecasts for the future. So very important that being able to actually record those and then track and stay on track with them as we progress towards that ultimate goal of being carbon neutral. So just a quick recap then. So yeah, we have the ability to use the e-documents Power Automate, multiple VAT numbers for a customer record, adding attachments when we send electronic documents, and obviously then cloud for sustainability. Catherine, thank you very much. That's a brief overview of Cloud for Sustainability and some of the legislation updates coming in the next release. Thanks, Jeremy. Um, the multiple VAT numbers, could you just give me a bit of background on that? How is that going to benefit me? Absolutely. I think I skipped over that when I mentioned it. I should have gone into some more detail. Um, That's OK. Today within BC, as you know, we can create customer records and we have the ability to record a VAT number. Fantastic. That's great. But actually, what do we do when we have a customer with who operate in multiple jurisdictions? Well, we may have to create multiple customer records. That gets a bit messy, creates a lot of data in our system. Well, with this new release, we're able to create a customer record and then have multiple VAT numbers against that customer. So it allows us to create those invoices to generate that information in the system without having to create multiple records. So really flexible and allows us to handle customers working across the globe. That's really useful, isn't it? And then obviously if we needed um, specifics to be able to file those, uh, the equivalent of a making tax digital, so in Spain, whatever their equivalent is, we would have to have the localised fiscals. So I'm guessing this just generates me a report. So I've got the information to submit, but it won't do the whole technical bit electronically. Yeah, absolutely. So we're able to generate that report, but very much like making tax digital that we have here in the UK, you would need a localization for the, that particular jurisdiction. So mm. we can generate you the report. You just need that extra localization to submit to the various authorities. Yeah, I know how useful this is going to be for a number of our customers that have got, you know, depots and warehouses and distribution uh, all over Europe. So, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a great addition uh, and like sustainability. I think that that's going to be very interesting for a lot of our distribution companies. And on that note, we've had a question come in. So I think this the issue might be device specific. Um, so. Uh, one of our manufacturing clients has asked whether the manufacturing items can show CO2 costs and the combined costs on components and routings. Uh, obviously, in manufacturing, we've got the production bill of materials and we have the production routings. I don't know, Jeremy, if you know the answer to that instantly, but it will. we can dig into it now. If we don't get the answer while we're on here, we will email you and let you know. So I think I that's think, a fantastic uh, question. Very, very specific use case. Um, yeah, I'm, 
I'm rattling around in my brain. I can feel the little man running around. Uh, but let's take that one offline, Catherine, and um, I, we will definitely get back to you for sure. But it's a I, great question. I agree. It's new functionality we've only been playing with in, in a few days. So uh, I, I'm not going to give you the wrong answer. We will take that one offline and we will come back to you uh, as soon as we can. Thank you. So now um, we're going to cover the functional areas, general application areas and user experiences. So a bit more of Jeremy. Over, you, over to you. Thank you, Catherine. And uh, I hope everyone's not getting fed up with my voice. Um, so, yes, general application and user experience. So we're looking at just more broader across the um, application and, and how the enhancements are being made for the digital general user experience. Now, some of these are, are minor tweaks, but actually they will have a lot of benefits for you as all of our customers and users. Having the ability to drag and drop um, file uploads to attach multiple files. We know if we've got um, expenses or maybe invoices, whatever it might be, we drag and drop one at a time, takes a long time, but we can now take multiple files and drop them um, and attach them within Business Central. So moving away from having to do one thing at a time, we can do it en masse again, just shaving those couple of minutes off of our general day-to-day -day tasks. Resizing columns when personalization isn't enabled. So we um, like to know that we turn personalization off so people can't run wild with their system, um, but you may need to do certain things and resizing columns because maybe data's got a little bit too large, you're able to do now within um, the system, even when personalization is turned off. Changing the data search method in, list, in lists, sorry. So actually having the ability to change the way that uh, we search through our data in list pages. We now can manage uh, subscription billing and revenue and expense recognition. So uh, if we have any subscription billing, we can manage that within uh, Business Central. Uh, one of the large areas that are linked to general application, or, or I've grouped them in general application, is the ability to integrate to Dynamics 365 field service and service management. So we have service management within Business Central, but we now have the ability to link that natively out of the box to field service from Dynamics. This is really powerful, especially for those organizations that have engineers that are going out into the field. They may already utilize field service today, but actually then linking that back to service management within the BC environment. We can archive service management documents, so we may have to keep certain documents for a certain period of time. We can archive those away so they're not taking up space and, and real estate within the system. Having the ability linked to that integration is viewing the items in field service work orders. So we're creating a work order in field service. We know that we need a particular item to complete the work order, and we can see its availability in real time as part of that integration. So I may need, may need sorry, a particular widget to complete a task, to complete a job. I can see that if that's available. If it's not, we can then put that on order and then we can schedule that, that um, field service job for an appropriate time when that widget comes back. Or if I know that it's in uh, stock, I can pop to the warehouse, go and pick one up and then off out I go to do my, to do my job. We have Excel reports for consolidation and fixed assets. We can add extended text to project planning lines. So we may need to add a bit more, bit more light to certain project lines when a consultant are doing the work. We can add that extended text. It's limited today to a certain amount of characters. We can um, default the quantity of one for accounts and documents. Replenish items for projects. So if I'm working on projects, jobs as it was called in, in the previous world, I can replenish those items directly from the project. Use directed put away and pick warehouses with projects, something that wasn't available previously, and the improved usability for service and projects. So just a bit more general updates and enhancements within, um, within the system. So Catherine, we just went through those as a list there. They were quite bitty updates. I, I didn't really want to dive in the system, but just to, just to highlight some of the areas that are available. Uh, do we have any questions at all? No, uh, they're not coming in thick and fast. So I, as I say, I think it might be device related. So perhaps if you're on a phone, it works, but on a laptop, it's not. So um, we're, we'll monitor those over the next few days. Um, so I did say we'd introduce you to Jeremy and there's still more. Uh, so here he is again with the last section, government and administration. Um, this is much more relevant to the technical people watching, but still interesting for us uh, application people. Over to you, Jeremy. 
Thanks, Catherine. Um, I guess I'd like to thank you all. I mean, I've come into the organisation. I feel like I've taken over. So thank you for putting your trust in me <laughs> to run to run this today. But we haven't left. Well, actually, we have. I think we've left the best of last. Governance administration, it's very important. Um, and it's good to see some of the enhancements that are coming uh, in this latest release. So I'm just going to go through a few of the points and then we're going to dive in to the admin centre to see what this looks like in real life. So as part of the um, latest release, so again, this is all in SAS. So remember that it's all in the SAS world. Uh, we've got the ability using the admin centre to manage the environment updates. Uh, we can do that more flexibly. Uh, I'm going to show you how we can set windows and due dates on those updates. Managing those uh, extensions, we can do that from within the admin centre. View the application compatibility with future versions in the admin centre. So if we've got multiple apps that are linked to our environment, we can see that compatibility with the latest releases that are coming. If we need to make any changes, obviously we can get that ahead of time. Having those external notifications when job queue entries fail, typically we might have job queues running overnight and we're not in the system. So it's really great now that we can get external notifications um, when things are, are, are failing. In product notifications about issues with job queue background processing. So having that alert pop up in the top right hand corner. Having a list of the uh, manageable environments for the Entra apps so Microsoft Entra apps, having that list also within the admin center. And then linked to what Tom mentioned about uh, multi-factor authentication right at the beginning of the presentation. Uh, there's support now for IPv6 for enhanced security and scalability. So Microsoft really driving that investment in uh, security and the scale scalability arena. So just going back to the admin center or going into the admin center, I'm going to select on my environments and I can see that I have one environment here called production V2. Now I'm going to dive into my environment. I can see I've got the um, the environment where it's hosted. Mine's hosted in the United States, just so I can show you the, all of the co-pilot features today. I knew I'd get it in once more. Um, we have the application version, the platform version, and then I can see when the next available update is coming and when it is scheduled. Now, I mentioned about having that flexibility. You can see here that I have an update window. So I'm now able to schedule a window of when my updates are going to take place. Now, I know in my organization that 2100 to 4 a.m. in the morning is downtime. I have no one working, so that's a great time for me to schedule my updates to my system. So I have said that in that for that window. I can also set a date as well. So along with my window, I can also set a date. So let's say Friday, the 22nd of November between 2100 and 4 a.m. the next morning. That's when my updates are going to take place. So we can manage that for each um, version update. And I think Catherine mentioned that there are two per year uh, coming for in the SaaS world. So I can manage that within the admin center and I know exactly what's coming and when. I mentioned about having external notifications. They're in here. I can add as many people as I like. So when there's any changes to environments, any updates, any failures, they will get notified and everyone in this list will receive an email telling them that something has happened. You need to go in and have a look in the admin center. I've got a list of all of my authorized enter apps that are linked to my environment. Uh, what's new as well is I've got telemetry. So if I go back and look at the last, uh, let's say, 20 minutes from now, I'm going to pick my environment that I've been using. I can get all the telemetry information. There's nothing there. Let's go back. Let's go 120 minutes. I know there's been something there in the last two hours. And I'm also able to get all of that telemetry data, no failure messages um, related to my environment. Any reported outages? So I've had no reported outages in the last, um, well, actually forever. I'm able to see my environment operations as well. So I'm just going to select all. So you can see you can use filters. I'm able to select my environments as well. So if you want to look at a specific environment, you can. I select on filter and I'm able to see all of my environments. I can see the operation that was conducted. So I can see at the bottom here, there was a soft delete taken place on the 12th of November by the administrator. And I can see that was completed. So having all of that information about your environment, you get right from within the admin center. And finally, capacity. We're always talking about capacity and database space and how much you get in the SaaS world. Well, I can see as with my environment, I've got 80 gigabytes um, as for my tenant in my environment. 
with each user license you get additional and i think Catherine will talk about that in a moment and you can also purchase additional capacity from microsoft i can see my quotas of environments i've got one production i've got three that are available and finally i can see the storage by environment so i can see that my production v2 instance is using very little but if i wanted to i can actually come in look at the storage by table the system will go away and it'll get me all of my storage by table so i can really drive and dive down into that lowest level of detail to understand what tables are um, eating up the most data it's probably not going to load for you now so Catherine, we'll go back to you if there's any questions at all. Uh, we've had a couple of questions that we've answered. People, unfortunately, still on perpetual licenses, wanting to know when they'll get the updates, which, uh, uh, as we said at the very beginning, very happy to give you quotes for upgrades uh, and discuss the options on transitioning licenses to SAS if that's the way you wanted to go. Um, there's a few things that came out of that for me, Jeremy. Um, we don't have to do anything with the updates. In fact, probably better to leave it alone. But Microsoft announced at Vienna, apparently, that you can now skip one update. Why would you want to do that? I don't know. But the reality is that you can skip one update and obviously you can change when those updates are coming in. I think they happen in the middle of the night on a Sunday as a generalization if you're on the uh, UK and EMEA uh, as your uh, sites. Um, even if you do skip one update, you will be forced to take the update at the next release. And as I said earlier, April and October as a generalisation about when they happen um, and they do come and go and stop and start. So um, be aware. Um, the other thing is the capacity. So mm -hmm. um, you get 80 gigabytes in total across all of your production and all of your sandboxes. So you have, for example, one production and up to three sandboxes. And that 80 gigabytes is the total capacity across all of those. On top of that, you get one gigabyte for a team or a device member license that you have. You get two gigabytes if you are on the essentials user per full user. And if you're on the premium license, you get three gigabytes. So it's a little bit of a quick calculator job to work out how many users you've got and how many gigabytes you've got. Um, generally, capacity is not too much of a problem. But if you have got big gate databases and we have a number of clients who have very large databases, then you soon start bumping into it. And the cost of buying additional gigabytes, as you might imagine, is crazily expensive. Thank you, Microsoft. Um, I think that's everything from our end. Um, we will be, oh, there's, I can see another question popped up. So um, we will be monitoring those uh, as we go over the next uh, little while. And uh, we will come back to you from that point of view. Um, yeah, the, the, we've just posted in the chat the link to the what's new and when it's coming that uh, Jeremy alluded to earlier. So you've got the link to that, which is really useful because you can see what's coming when, uh, like the, and I'm going to say that word again, co-pilot. So how many did you actually count? How many co-pilots did you spot? Ping me an email and let me know. So hopefully you found that useful. Thank you much, very much, Jeremy, for taking on the line share of that. Any other questions, ping me an email or uh, email inquiries at d-c.co.uk and uh, enjoy the new release. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.